Hey everybody, this is Matt Fish, owner and founder of Melt Barn Grilled. We're sitting here in our beautiful Avon location. This is one of our newer stores in the Melt Company, the Melt Group, the Melt Family, as we like to call it. Uh, we opened up out here back in 2017. If you haven't been out here yet, please come check it out. It's one of our bigger locations. We have a big covered patio that's open all year, but especially in the summertime, you can sit with a cover over top of you, some garage doors go up. It's also a party room for us. But today we're here not only to talk about me, to talk about Melt, which is not as important as this young man sitting next to me right here. This is my good friend, Bear. Um, Bear and I have known each other for quite a long time. We met in the early 90s. And um, if you look around, not only this location, but the past locations we, we've opened up, including the newly renovated Lakewood location, there are a good amount of rock and roll posters that represent bands that have come through Cleveland and basically all of Ohio since 1967. And this outstanding human being sitting next to me, my good friend, as we confirmed earlier today, my good friend, he only has friends, but we are good friends. And you probably only have two, three, four. Ah, uh, man, you're stretching. Stretching. So I'm, <laughs> I'm in very, I'm, in, I'm in, I'm in a very elite group here of, of calling myself a good friend, but my good friend Bear owns a company called Raw Sugar Art Studios, and they've been producing rock and roll posters um, of bands that have come through the region, not only Ohio, but the region, since 1967. I did not know that. When I first met Bear, I met him in the early 90s. I was working in a restaurant out in Brecksville, and Bear was a regular that knew the owner that used to come in a lot. He would actually walk in the back door. This man didn't use the front door. He only used the back door. So he'd walk in the back door. I was in the kitchen at the time, obviously. So I was cooking, prepping, doing whatever. We would sit in the, on the back steps leading into the kitchen, share a drink, um, share some coffee, soda pop, maybe a beer, so maybe a, a shot every so often. And we just got to know each other um, just as human beings, as people that were living in the same world together. Not really talking about his past or my past or where we're going, but it was a time and a place. It was about 10 years that we knew each other. I left the restaurant to move on with my life, worked in different restaurants, ended up opening Melt, lost track of Bear for many, many years, probably almost 20 years. I hadn't seen yeah. this guy. Um, so. Fast forward to probably 2015, uh, I was working in an independent store and Bear walks in and he used to be very clean cut, buzz cut on top, no facial hair. Um, his former occupation had to, had to be clean, sharp looking man. Um, so this guy walks in with a longer beard than he has today. He's got his hair covered up right now, but he had hair down to here. He walks in, walks straight up to me and says, hey, Matt Fish, I think you know me. And I'm looking at him and I'm literally squinting. I'm like, I do not know this human being. And he introduces himself as Bear and all these, this flood of memories just start coming back. And we start talking and he says, hey, I'm, I don't think you realize, but um, in my past life, I was basically the premier poster artist for every single band that came into Cleveland and the region since 1967. I'm getting my company back up. I'm starting to reproduce all these posters again. I really want to sit down with you to maybe we can work together to have you put up some memorabilia in your restaurants. And this was a perfect thing because I was just starting to work on the Akron location and I was going for more of a kind of a Cleveland, Akron, Canton, rock and roll theme and it worked out great. So he showed me his website, showed me all the posters, and I was like, my brain just exploded because I had no idea that this guy was doing this since 1967. When I met him, I had no idea that he was doing this, but here he sits, and now we have Bears posters in Akron, Canton, Dayton, the Avon location we're sitting here, and our newly renovated Lakewood space. We gutted the Lakewood store, put it all back together, and there's a ton of Bears posters up, and actually there's different, uh, photographers in Cleveland that we work with too, that we're working side by side with Bear at the time. The, photo, the, the, the guys and girls were photographing these concerts and Bear was creating the posters. So it's really cool. I was able to get photographs and posters from the same show and kind of tie them together. So um, we can walk around later and we'll, we'll show you guys some of the cooler things that we've got going on. But dun dun dun, dun Mr. Bear. Here he is. All right, interview's over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he doesn't speak. I'm, I, he, I'm sorry. No, he I does. Try he, not to. He, he tries not to speak, but we're going to get it out of him. So tell us the story because I am not going to do it justice. 1967, 
you're going to start making posters. Well, there, <laughs> it was really, there was a group of guys, all, all friends, and we were just trying to find a way to make some extra money. And like I said, it, shits and giggles, but really it was to find a way pick up money for beer and wheat. Right. And but you were bouncing at the time too. So you were working yeah, these we were, shows. Yeah, we were working the shows. Uh we were working with uh, uh Sunrise back oh, then, yeah. in the old days. And uh you know there was about three of us and a couple of our buddies and uh we ended up just uh, again there was this guy and uh we used to see him at all the concerts and he'd cut these little pieces of uh leather out, hand tool them, you know, what concert date and and people are buying them. Like thinking. little tokens of memorabilia. Yeah, and people were buying them. We're like, you know what? We could do this. I mean, we had done some posters before, but nothing like on the scale. So we started doing them. The buddies that uh, weren't uh, doing security for the concerts were out in the parking lots while we're inside working the shows. They're out there selling the stuff. And we realized, you know, we can make more money doing this than we could. Bouncing. Real jobs. Yeah. Um, but it just, uh, it kind of grew. And we never ever realized that what we were doing then, we'd still be doing now, 2019. That's crazy. Well, yeah, because, and we never thought, knew that we would be seeing uh, stuff like uh, our posters in places like here, or, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or any of the well, there. Hopkins Airport, you've got you've got posters yeah, at Hopkins they got Airport them as well. Up to like eight foot tall. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, so you get off. I get off a plane and I see him there, and it's like, yeah, it kind of throws me. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just we never knew that what we were doing back then would have any relevance now. Yeah, you. How did you know that? selling these posters out of your trunk and making a couple bucks at a show was going to turn into you creating i mean i mean you probably don't even know how many posters or maybe you do you have no. actually created because i can look on your website and i have purchased and gotten from you literally hundreds and hundreds in the high hundreds like probably going on the thousands that we've gotten yeah we're figuring i mean we figure over the years and we try to do a list uh and it was about Six thousand. Holy cow! But the thing of it is that list grows because we still do about uh, two hundred to two hundred and fifty posters for you know uh, tours for venues. Oh wow! Each year. So you're still producing even today. You guys are still relevant. You're still producing posters for bands, for concert promoters, for venues, yeah. and they all contact you in different ways. Yeah, and you know we've done. Um, I mean, like this past year. Uh, the zombies, mm -hmm. you know, they're, you know, and congratulations to the zombies getting in the rock hall. Uh, but uh, no, they um, they reached out because they saw something we did, and so they were like, "Hey, we want you to do the UK tour and our West Coast tour, and then we did special posters for uh, their show at the Fillmore and the Troubadour." Oh wow, that's you awesome! Know, two you know iconic venues, and you know Uriah Heap reaches out to us, and so we're still doing them for. Uh, Bands that I guess I like. Yeah, but they're still relevant. I mean, these guys yeah. had hits, sure, in the late '60s and early '70s, and were, but they're still out there. And if they're oh, playing, if they're playing the Fillmore, they're still pretty popular. Oh yeah, and uh, then we have uh, a group of promoters that we still work with. Um, actually, you know, back where you were saying, you know, I got talked back into this business by a promoter that I was friends with back in the '70s and. He's like, hey, really want you to do the work for all of our shows. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, that kind of snowballed. Uh, but now, like I said, we're sitting here 2019 and we're still producing new stuff. That's and awesome. The old stuff that you see on the walls here, I mean, people gravitate to it. They right. love it. And I think the cool part about you as an individual, but also the, the brains behind this company, is that it's all you. You're the artist, you're designing these posters, you're the contact person that these bands and promoters are calling up and saying, hey Bear, we want you to make these posters. Then you go create the poster yourself with your, with your talent, and then you and your wife are printing these posters basically on a daily basis and shipping them out worldwide to people. Yeah, because it, yeah. 
It is. It's a one man and a one woman show. It is. I mean, the thing is, we try to keep it again Lean at and my mean. age. Uh, don't want to get too big, so we kind of kept it scaled down. I got some really good young artists that work for me, and each of them has a different take. So if it's a uh, heavier metal band, mm -hmm. we have someone great for that. If oh, it's cool. somebody that's more indie, whatever, I have an artist that does perfect for that. So we kind of, you know, they work, but it's all with what um, whatever the concept that I come up with with the band. Oh, okay, got it. You know, and then basically if I can do it, I try to get it done. Um, again, things like with, like I said, the zombies, you're right, Heap, they want me to do the work because, well, I did the work decades ago for mm -hmm. them. That's and awesome. Yeah. That's loyalty. That's great. I mean, that's what we try to do. That's what that's how I try to run business and conduct myself too. It's like I've used the same venue, the same per people almost through my entire career and it sounds like these bands have also used you throughout their entire career because you get comfortable you get to know the people you get to like them they do great work for you their turnaround time is probably fantastic yeah it's you know and you're kind of a cool guy yeah well you really don't know me then uh no <laughs> we're good friends though hey, we're good friends. good friends we confirmed it but no it's um the thing of it is is there's certain genres i mean there's a lot of artists out there I mean, oh, tons, yeah. Yeah, and, but there's band, you know, there's the style that I have, certain people feel comfortable. I mean, we've done work for Todd Rundgren for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we did, you know, we did the work for Marley. We Now we do the work for Ziggy Marley. Mm. Uh, and Steven. That's awesome. I mean, so it's, you know, there's some familiarity, there's, and there is comp, you know, it's like, you know what I'm gonna give you, Yeah. so they come back. That's cool. Now, we strategically picked this spot here to sit down because behind me, I actually happened to place, because, you know, I'm sure you guys know this, but when we open up a new store, when we come in and do all the decoration work and all the, the infrastructure work, I personally put up every single poster. I picked the spot for every, piece of memorabilia that goes up on the wall so this wall particularly was a smaller wall for me when I first started off here so I actually put up all of my favorite posters believe it or not on the same wall so you've got Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, Joan Jett, Led Zeppelin, Kiss, Guns N' Roses back here on the same wall so we kind of strategically sat here so we could have these awesome posters sitting behind us so these are some of my favorites that you guys have made I mean the list goes on and on and on but you what are some some posters that over the years that stand out? Maybe not because of the design, but maybe the time and place, or there was something that just set it apart. Like, what what are some of your top three or five? Um, the Zeppelin, I mean, just because it was such iconic shows um, at the Coliseum. What I I've got two posters that are actually the only two that hang up in my office. One is uh, Sinatra. The, the 70 show from the 70 the opening up of the Coliseum. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, got that with, uh, you know, my ticket. The medallion got that night, but it was great to do the poster. Oh, for sure. Um, and then uh, <laughs> I've got uh, an original cream poster we did that uh, my granddaughter, when she was very, very little, decided she was going to draw all over. <laughs> yeah, it's it was like we know of only three of them in existence still, and one of them has her artwork all over it. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Yeah, so that's framed up. So she drew, drew all over all the over, original, all over the one of the only three originals we know in existence. Wow. Yeah. So, but so uh, are you reproducing that cream poster? Yeah, we. I do, think so. I think yeah, we might have, have that. One yeah, I do somewhere. Yeah, yeah. but. Um, to me, it's like um, I have a hard time looking at some of the art that I did because I look at it now and I kind of I critique myself. Mm. It, nothing you could do when you're going back 40 years. No. But um, yeah, I mean, so to me, the posters, um, I actually get a different sense of the posters when I walk in a place like here and I see them framed and on the walls. I mean, the Iron Maiden, 
I never really thought too much about it, but uh -huh. I love the way the poster looks now. Uh, yeah. In context, how it sits with everything else. Yes. Yeah. And this was kind of like my little heavy metal corner over here with, with Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, and some modern day you know metal posters that were Derek Hess made. But yeah, I. What I mean is, there anything else like another poster that maybe trigger has a memory trigger for you? Like this one really stands out as something that was like, maybe not it's not the greatest poster, but for the time and the place. Yeah, I mean, well, I, there's a poster we did in. Uh, 74 for Steely Dan that it was did, we didn't know at the time but it was their last tour until they oh. reunited and uh, that poster Bowie's first show we just happened to do that one yeah. the first show ever in the US because Belkins brought him here yeah that was uh, what 72 two. at at the music at music hall Mu yeah yeah I think that poster's floating around in and here then, someplace uh, he came back a couple months later yeah so those kind of, sh uh, the posters that have a lot of meaning, like I said, the opening of the Coliseum with Sinatra, mm -hmm. you know, Bowie's first show in the U.S. Um, and then when it comes to artwork, um, I like the stuff that it did long, long ago with the Art Nouveau style. Mm -hmm. I like that. Problem is, is the people I was working with at the time, we're like, this is taking way too long. <laughs> you know, I can see that, yeah. You know, let's just throw the name of the band on there. And then the other thing I like, too, is when I go back and I see some of the posters, and I forget about the shows, but the lineups. I mean... Mm, yeah, that's what really impressed me about a lot of these posters when I started looking at them is like, holy shit, this band played with this band, played with this band. And it wasn't like the World Series of Rock at, at, at right. Municipal Stadium where that was like a festival. This is like your average Tuesday night at Music Hall or at the Fantasy or at this venue. The, I mean, you know, there was a poster, I can't think of the year, but uh, I remember the show. Uriah Heep was the headliner, the middle act was Earth, Wind & Fire, and ZZ Top was the opener. That's a hodgepodge. Yeah, it's like you're going from one to the, I mean, it was like none of the three genres Meshed, and they didn't belong in the same venue, no, but, or the same show. But but somehow it worked. That was the nice thing about the shows back then. I mean, you know, you go see the Stones, and you got Etta James opening for her, right? You know, for them. Um, so that was the. That's what, and that's one of the things I like. It's like you see a poster like that. It's right. Like just because it brings back the memories of just such a strange show. Mm -hmm. Now you've done posters. Now I mean we've rattled off certain a bunch of names, but I mean you've done everybody from small acts that probably only had one or two albums out to literally the Beatles, the Stones, the Doors, Sinatra, the Who. I mean like some of the biggest players in rock and roll history, and no one's ever going to top their record sales or their popularity. Led Zeppelin. Um, what what? How many of these bands have you actually met and rubbed devils with and talked to and said, "Hey, here's my poster," or "I created this poster for you," or "Hey, you're an asshole," or whatever? Oh yeah, no, we know plenty of them. <laughs> uh, we well, back in the day, I mean, we would we knew them more from working the security. Oh, true. Uh, than hey, we did the poster for this show, um, and back then you really weren't supposed to you know, interact with the bands, you know, they'd come in off stage, they'd go to the dressing room, you know, whatever. Do what they do. And right. that's it. I mean, but then when they get to see you multiple times, then you re then that's when you start building relationships. It's like, you know, I probably have seen Springsteen or worked his shows a dozen times. Uh, couldn't tell you too much about him. I mean, besides little interaction but you know what Clarence Clements was a great guy uh, uh, Stevie Van Zant, great guy you know you get to meet and talk to people like that that actually will take the time right because or, they see you yeah. all the time or maybe people that weren't on stage but like their roadies their tech guys their sound guys their light guys those are the guys you would probably get oh, to know a lot uh, Red Dog with the uh, Allman Brothers <laughs> I mean I'm sure there's some legendary stories. We don't even have time to yeah, sum them up. But I mean, you know, that kind, you know, right. great guy, you know, the genuine article and as crazy as really you could ever so imagine. Lives up to the reputation. 
Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I read his book, and it's like, yeah, I every bit of it. True. It's true. Yeah. Um, so how did you start working? I think a good a good story would be, you were making these posters, literally selling them out of your trunk, bootlegs, selling them in at the venue in the parking lot to people that were coming in and coming out of the shows, just like the old t-shirt guys or that guy making yeah. leather. How did you go from that to then having Michael Belkin call you up and say, you need to stop selling these things in my parking lot and you need to start working for me and making these posters for us full time? Well, it was a lot of the other promoters actually. Um, you know, especially when Jerry Weintraub. Uh, who's he? Uh, he's more known for uh, his movies. He okay. was a big, he, he just passed away a couple years ago, but uh, he made like all the Ocean Eleven movies and oh. big time producer in Hollywood. But he also was the guy that brought uh, Sinatra to town, Elvis. Um, he also, so he actually was controlling the tours with the Eagles, uh, which is, that's a story we got fired because we didn't, read our own I mean we didn't proofread the poster oh. <laughs> we're so used to putting Belkin on everything oh. so we did these Eagles posters for uh, the show we deliver them and then get and this is back before there's pagers or any, get a call and I'm I'm sleeping and I mean I'm out passed out and my girlfriend's shaking me awake and like uh, there's somebody from California calling you and he, you know, we put Belkin on there instead of Wine Trop Productions. <laughs> and so Oops. we got fired and it was like, you gotta be kidding me. And then, uh, well, we worked our way back and it was good gracious, but uh, no. So like they, they would come in and they knew about us and they'd heard, you know, and so they started reaching out and saying, hey, why don't you do the work for us? Cool. And then that's when we started becoming um, legit. Right out yeah. of the pirate back back of the the truck world yeah. and into actually the promoters calling you up and saying I need a poster for X Y and Z and that turned into literally over 6000 posters over the yeah. over the last you know 40 some years 40 50 years yeah and you know it's funny now we'll we'll hear from uh, bands uh, hey can we get some posters for our archives can we get posters oh, that's cool you know for the I, website you know yeah genesis sells a t-shirt on their official store that's our poster oh no kidding yeah that's uh, awesome you know and you know we get black oak arkansas you know bands that you know that are still out there but it's more or less we get it from the management and they're saying mm -hmm. hey we'd love to have this for the archives and we we ship them to them you that's know awesome. it's like you know well, you can see all the melt or all the posters in some of our melt locations. Not all of them yet, but we're working together to try to get some more, especially down in Columbus. But we've got your stuff and a good amount of your stuff up in. Let's count it off. So Akron was the first store we started working yeah. with together. Akron, Canton, Dayton, here in the Avon location where we're sitting today, the newly renovated Lakewood space. So that's five out of ten locations. We're going to get some in down in, um, I know we're talking about Columbus now to get some stuff down there that you've, yeah. you've found some stuff. And you're, on, you're, you're digging through the stuff that you've made that you don't even realize you had. I remember when we first opened the Dayton store, I called Bear up and I was like, hey man, I'm going to Dayton. We're going to open up a store, you know, probably six, eight months. What do you got from Dayton? And he's like, oh man, I don't think I ever did anything in Dayton. Or if I did, it was only like three or four. Let me, let me look and let me see what I got. And then you can call me like two weeks later and you're like, the windfall, like yeah, holy shit, there's hundreds, hundreds of <laughs> We found hundreds. And but with that we found the posters we did in Louisville and Lexington and Cincinnati and Indianapolis and you know, um, recently I mean there we we had no posters from Columbus on the right. website. And it's like digging through the archives, but then uh, Michael Belkin reached out to me, says, Hey, what do you have? And we found again hundreds. Wow. And so, you know, it's like until someone says, hey, do you have? Yeah, you don't know. We don't even think about it because, again, we're just trying to get, you know, we're up until seven years ago, we didn't even think people would want this stuff. I mean, and that's the thing. It's been sitting in boxes for decades. Yeah. 
No, I mean, it's probably more popular now than it ever has been because it's all nostalgia stuff. And it's stuff that you can't recreate. You can't remake these posters that are behind us or that we're going to show you guys today or go to the website and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of posters from different venues, from different va bands, from different eras that you can buy. I mean, if you're a fan of the 80s, if, John, if Elton John is one of your favorite artists, he's got posters for him. Like um, Daryl Hall and John Oates, posters. Prince, posters. Go-Go's, posters. I mean, Neil Young, posters. I mean, like, we can just rattle off like every genre, everything, everything you want. I mean, Joni Mitchell posters, you know. Yeah. It's Frank Sinatra posters. Um, I, Stones posters, you know, as the Stones come on. So, Miles Davis. Miles, I mean, yeah, that's true. Everybody. I mean, even the old soul stuff that used to come to Cleveland. They played yeah, the Leos. The Temps. Uh, Smokey Robinson, Aretha. Otis, you have an Otis Redding poster. Otis Redding from the last show we ever did. Yeah, I think that's tragic, but it's something you touched on earlier, which I thought was really cool that I wanted to bring up, was that when, you were, when you're creating these posters, you never know. This may be the last poster for the last show of this artist, right. or the last concert, or this may be, who knows, this band may fizzle out and break up, so this might be the last concert, the last tour they ever do, or this member might die, or this member might leave and go solo, or unfortunately, like, like the Otis Redding situation, you have the poster for the last concert that that right. man did while ever, until he got in that plane, and the unfortunately it crashed. Yeah, they, you know, so yeah, it's, it, it, it was, um, I believe it was, Jules Belkin that reached out to me about man, it had to be 10 years ago and when we just started putting the stuff out there and showing people and it's like he said you know I'm really glad you're keeping our name alive you know because you know it's if you think about it we are we have like the little uh, uh, footnotes of music history that's come through Northeast Ohio. Oh and, yeah, you know, Ohio. You know, basically the whole area. And uh, yeah, I mean, the the thing of it is, is people don't remember bands like Delaney and Bonnie, and you know, until someone like Clapton says how important they are. Well, you know what? We did their work. Yeah. So that to me is always. You know, and it's an archive because cool. these venues didn't keep an archive record of who came and who did. I'm sure that the producers know who they did, but they have no tangible thing you can hold on to and say, hey, we did this Springsteen show, we did this. You're the only person that literally, unless somebody has a ticket stub from every concert that was ever performed in Cleveland, you're the only person basically in the country, in the world, that has an archived record of every single concert that came through this Midwest region. Yeah, and again, you know, we don't even know everything we have. <laughs> um, I, I, I was telling you earlier before we started about when um, Chris Cornell passed away. People reaching out, you have anything from Soundgarden? I'm like, I don't think we ever did anything. And then about six months later or five months later, we found a box where there was Soundgarden at the Fantasy. Yeah. Did, forgot totally about it. I mean... But in that same box, we found that the Red Hot Chili Peppers there. Yeah, I've got a lot, we've got a lot of the Fantasy. The Fantasy was a venue in Lakewood that's now closed, but it was a very important venue back in probably the late '70s and in mid to late, in, in, even in the '90s. I yeah. I played a lot of show there shows there. A lot of local Cleveland bands played, but they did a lot of smaller national acts that would come through that now would maybe go to the Agora or the Beachland right. or the or the Grog Shop or the Euclid Tavern back in the day, but the Fantasy really had all these all these national acts. And the posters you ever, I mean, Joan Jett played there, Red Hot Chili Peppers played there, Soundgarden played there. Uh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam played there. Uh, nice Nails used to play there because they were a local Cleveland yeah. band. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. It's true. Yeah, I mean, so big time players. So we have a lot of those posters hanging in a Lakewood store if you want to see those or just go to Bear's website. So, hey, let's summarize, man. Thank you very much. Oh, cheers. Let's cheers. Hey. Thanks. This was fun. This was fun. Hey.